So in, uh, as the weather gets cold and cooler in the fall here and into the winter, while I'm observing at the telescope, uh, in recent years I find that I like to have a little heat nearby, if nothing else, to warm the hands um, and whatnot. So, and even when you're meteor observing, you can aim it at uh, if you're uh, observing from a lounge chair. So, I uh, happened to find this several years ago, 60,000 BTU heater. But I had to do some modifications, and I'll show you what I did. So one of the first things I had to do was I'm not heating the outside. So these, uh, all these uh, kerosene heaters have a, a pressure that uh, they use at the given rating. And all I wanted was heat, uh, a source for some heat, and I didn't need anything for heating a building. So in this particular unit, this is what uh, adjust the pump pressure. And so what I did is I just took a measurement with my calipers and wrote it down in the manual what this distance was. And then I loosened the jam nut and turned it out and then until it started to smoke and just turned it in just enough for the smoke to stop. And then put the jam nut back on you know tighten that up so that this wouldn't move and again uh, that's how I did it just enough to where it wasn't smoking and I left it at that and that uh, is sufficient so that's I'm using the least amount of, of fuel kerosene as possible and the other thing is a lot of them use a gauge now this particular model heater that I have doesn't have a port for a gauge but if yours has a port for a gauge you could use that uh, in setting it back up to the spec of your manual when you want to put it back to normal this particular I don't use this uh, at all uh, for heating my garage I have a bigger one for that this is strictly for astronomy use so but that's why I had to use calipers because I didn't have anything to go back to a gauge with. So by doing that, that should get me, as far as I'm concerned, back to where the spec was at the factory. So I just thought I would mention that. Now the other thing that I had to deal with is the uh, intense light at night that's coming off of this heater uh, that is not good when your eyes are dark adapted nor is it uh, good for anybody else in the area. And it does throw off a lot of light. So I decided I need to make some kind of a shroud for the heater to direct the light down and also to keep an observer to shield it so that you don't see that direct light. But I also had to make sure that uh, I had enough open space so that you could uh, warm your hands uh, when, when needed. So this is the shield that I made. You're looking at the outside of it, which you would see uh, when it's uh, wrapped around the heater. And um, I have stainless steel fasteners that I used. Now here's the side that's going to be facing in, that'll get wrapped around, and um, what you have is, this is an angle bracket in which I'm going to put a clip in, uh, an S-hook. Over here is something that I rigged up, and I left it loose because that's going to go over the uh, guard the wire cage guard on the uh, heater. So this is what I'm going to use. If you look across that cable line there, you'll see you know, those two um, angle brackets that I have. 
on these edges of those that sheet metal this is what's going to go into the angle bracket hole these two S hooks and I just made this cable up and that's what's going to keep it wrapped around the heater to form around the heater and act as a again a uh, shield and direct the light down so this is what the shield looks like attached it's actually extremely simple very simple to do uh, now each heater could be a little bit different this just kind of gives you an example So here's that bolt that I had loose in the center of this piece of galvanized steel. So the reason for that to be loose is that's what kind of gives it, it keeps it from going up and down. Kind of keeps it in place there. And I just left it loose so I can catch behind it. Here you see the cable attached to the small angle bracket with the S-hook and it just goes right across to the other side. Very simplistic and very easy to use. Now one thing I will say is at the end of the evening have an old pair of gloves or, or something because you're gonna get this will get uh, carboned up you know from uh, the possibility some from that uh, from the heater there okay so here it is without the shroud hard to see the uh, area around it the glow on the ground but there is and um, Obviously, it's a lot of light to the observer, uh, yourself and other people in the area. So, one thing about this that I like this uh, heater is it's very quiet, as you can tell. It's not loud at all. That's one reason why I like it. My other salamander heaters, the bigger ones, they're just extremely loud. So when I tried to do the video with the shroud on it really didn't show up well at all on my camera so um, I just took some pictures and uh, decided to show you so what we have here is with a flashlight shining on the uh, heater with the shroud and then over here we have the uh, flashlight turned off and then you can see the light that it uh, diverts down to the ground an observer uh, would not see the bright light from the direct source of that heater and uh, which is very bright when your eyes are dark adapted and uh, it, it's just uh, ru ruins your night vision so this does work very well now something that I will do and it doesn't really show up well in this Again, in this video with this camera, I'm using a Nikon point and shoot. But um, if I'm observing by myself, I'll just aim at the opposite direction of my telescope and journey to the north. And uh, for a single observer, it's really not an issue. So I won't, I wouldn't use the shroud. The shroud is more for when you're with um, other observers at a star party. That way you're respectful to uh, any light pollution that, that, uh, that this heater would cause.